Hey traders, for the last 30 years, one man has consistently beaten the market with his hedge fund returning on average 66% per year. Jim Simmons, a mathematician by trade, pioneered the use of machine learning and automated algorithmic trading. To put that 66 per year into perspective, if you'd invested a thousand pounds at the start of year one, after 30 years, your investment would have been over four billion pounds today. How did they do it? Not by having the best traders, they did it with maths. We got a lot of data and very smart people. And uh, that, was the, that was the key. After earning his PhD in mathematics and serving as a university professor, the man from Massachusetts worked as a code breaker for the US Department of Defense. In 1976, he earned the Oswald Veblen Prize for his work in geometry, and his work provided the foundation for what would later become string theory in physics. Simmons was always interested in money. He started investing in various businesses for his life, and so he started his first hedge fund in 1978 called Money Metrics. The firm primarily traded in currencies, however the stress and uncertainty of traditional trading he said was draining for him, and he quickly learned that his love of numbers could be used to spot anomalies in the market data. We traded, uh, and we, we did very well, we did very well, but it was a gut-wrenching experience. You don't, it's, you know, one day you walk in and you think you're a genius, oh my positions are in my way, look I'm and the next day you walk in and they're against you and you feel like you're, you're a dope, how could I have done what I did and so on. There was no rhyme or reason, it was just, you know, you put your finger in the air and you try to sense which way the, the wind is blowing. In 1982, Simmons changed his approach and Money Metrics was changed to Renaissance Technologies. Rather than recruiting traders, he started recruiting scientists, physicists, astronomers, and started developing trading models based on data. The real thing was to gather a tremendous amount of data, and, and uh, we had to get it by hand in the early days. We went down to the Federal Reserve and copied interest rate histories and stuff like that, because it didn't exist on computers. We, we got a lot of data, and very smart people. They started with a simple mean reversion strategy. Mean reversion is based on the idea that over time, even if it rises or falls a little, the price of an asset will eventually revert back to the average price. While such a strategy wouldn't perform so well on its own today, in the 80s this was revolutionary and very effective on the commodities market where the prices were generally fairly consistently predictable. Commodities especially used to trend, uh, not dramatically trend, but trend. So if you could get the trend right, you'd bet on the trend and you'd make money more often than you wouldn't, whether it was going down or going up. That was an anomaly. In the, in the data, but gradually we found more and more and more and more anomalies. None of them is so overwhelming that you're gonna clean up on a particular anomaly, because if they were, other people would have seen them. So they have to be subtle things. This is because prices and trends were fairly linear. Simmons and his team, however, recognized that prices don't move in a linear fashion. While to the naked eye they appear random, Renaissance built the very first machine learning algorithm that could detect non-linear patterns and use today what we call kernel models. Well, any one anomaly might be a random thing. However, if you have enough data, you can tell that it's not. So uh, you, you, you can see an anomaly that's persisted for a sufficiently long time, so that the probability of it being uh, random is, uh, is not high. They had a black box that was spitting out price predictions that even they themselves were questioning. But they followed the predictions, and guess what? They started making a lot of money. In 1988, they launched the Medallion Fund, the flagship fund that we all know in the market today. And in their first year, they generated a 20% return, which at the time was nearly twice the next competitor. By the way, if you like this content, then hit the like and subscribe button and drop me a comment down below. By this point, the competitors were starting to catch up, so they had to adapt to stay ahead of the game. They switched their focus from detecting longer term trends to shorter term swings, and used something called the large law of numbers. This law states that the average results obtained from a large number of independent, identical random samples converges to a true value, if it exists. This is important because it guarantees stable long-term results for the averages of random events. For example, a casino may lose money in the single spin of a roulette wheel, however its earnings will tend towards a predictable percentage over a large number of spins. Any winning streak by a player will eventually be overcome by the parameters of the game. They'd also started combining more than one strategy in the same algorithm the trend recognition, and the shorter term swings. In 1990, they achieved a return of nearly 56%. However, until this point, they'd only been trading on currency and commodity markets. They had yet to crack the equity market. In the 60s, two economists, 
Samuelson and Farmer, developed a theory called efficient market hypothesis. This theory effectively said that in a perfect market, every new piece of news or information should be immediately priced into the market as soon as it's released, and that all stock prices would trade at a fair value. If this was the case, then it would be theoretically impossible to beat the stock market consistently. Simmons was determined to disprove this theory. There's something called the efficient market theory, which says that there's nothing in the data which will indicate anything about the future. Because the price is sort of always right. The price is always right in some sense. But that's just not true. So there are anomalies in the data, even in the price history data. The challenge with equities is that there are a large number of factors to take into account. You have trading fees to consider, delays in settlement, and price slippage. When you're trading with millions of dollars at a time, the very act of placing the trade significantly moves the market. This is especially true in bond markets, where the prices can be very fickle. Just placing a limit order can move the price away from you, even if it hasn't filled. But the prediction part is, the only, is not the only part. You have to know what your costs are when you trade. You're gonna move the market when you trade. Now, the average person will make up, buy 200 shares of something and he's not gonna move the market at all because it's too small. But if you wanna buy 200,000 shares, you're gonna push the price. How much are you gonna push the price? How are you gonna, you know, are you gonna push it uh, so far that you, you, <laughs> you can't make any money because you've distorted things so much? So you have to understand costs. The market is made up of buyers and sellers. The price of any asset is determined by what somebody is willing to pay you for it. If there are only a certain number of people in the market willing to sell you X number of shares at a particular price, then you need to go to the next person, who may want slightly more, and then the next person. By the time you get to the fifth person, they may have looked back at the first four trades and changed their mind about what they think of fair value for the prices. So if you place a significant trade, it's very unlikely that you're gonna fill it at your preferred price. This problem took Renaissance nearly two years to overcome, but eventually they found a way to maximize their strategy and minimize their trading costs. This is the secret sauce that they hang on to till this day. It's a big computer model. For one thing, there's a, there is a capacity to the major model. It can manage a certain amount of money, which is rather large, but it can't, it can't manage an enormous amount of money because you're pushing, you're gonna end up pushing the market around too much. So it was kind of a sweet spot as to how much it's reasonable to manage. Jim Simmons retired in 2010 and took a non-executive chairman role at Renaissance Technologies and has an estimated net worth today of nearly $30 billion. He pioneered the use of machine learning and automated algorithmic trading. Roll forward to 2024, one of mankind's greatest developments over the last 30 years has been the exponential growth of computing power, the development of supercomputers at the top end, and the trickle-down effect to the processing power of the average consumer laptops or tablets today. We have the world at our fingertips, quite literally. One tap of an app, and I can have my groceries delivered to my front door. These new norms mean that complicated trading algorithms can be processed quickly, with calculations made and trade executed in a fraction of a second leading to a new era of what we call high-frequency trading. Traders can identify and take advantage of anomalies in market data and scout profits in the time that it takes you to blink. What if you could leverage this technology, even without a PhD in mathematics? That's where our algo comes in. It's our revolutionary no-code algorithmic trading software that empowers anybody to build, backtest, and run their own trading strategies. No coding experience is required. Imagine building with Legos, but instead of creating castles and spaceships, you're constructing a powerful trading strategy. Aro Algo uses a block builder engine, so you can simply drag and drop the blocks to design your strategy. If you're worried about testing, then that's not a problem. Aro Algo has 10 years worth of market data, and you can backtest your strategy against different market conditions to see how it would have performed, giving you confidence before risking real money. With Aro Algo, you could become an algorithmic trader, no coding skills needed. And by the way, it's free. Jim Simmons may have been a mastermind, but with our algo, you don't need to be a genius to get started. We're putting the power of the market to your fingertips. Head over to ourargo.com and take control of your trading future. Remember that the financial markets involve risk, so always do your own research before investing, and happy trading.